Jerusalem, a historical journey through archaeology and art. Jerusalem, a mosaic of different peoples, faiths and nationalities. Nevertheless, despite this diversity, under the sovereignty of Israel, Jerusalem is a city that works. But has it always been this way? The first historical mention of Jerusalem is in the Bible, in the era of the Patriarchs. King David declares Jerusalem as Israel's capital, known from that point on also as Zion. His son, King Solomon, builds the first temple. But the temple is destroyed by the Babylonians, and the Jews are exiled. King Cyrus's declaration enables the Jews to return and rebuild the temple. Alexander the Great's conquests include Jerusalem. However, his successors desecrate the temple. Which leads to the Maccabees' revolt against the Greeks' imposition of Hellenism. The Roman Empire seizes control and King Herod renovates the temple. A large-scale revolt against a corrupt and vicious Roman reign fails. The second temple is destroyed and the Jews are banned from Jerusalem. Sixty years pass and Bar Kokhba leads another revolt for the freedom of Jerusalem. But it fails after three years of battle. Jews are banned from the city renamed by the Romans Aelia Capitolina in order to eradicate its Jewish heritage. Roman Emperor Constantine converts to Christianity and reinforces the ban on Jews entering Jerusalem. A new religion, Islam, sweeps through the Middle East. Non-Muslims are declared second-class citizens. Crusaders conquer Jerusalem in a bloodbath of Jews and Muslims. 2,000 Jews are burned alive in the main synagogue and the city is depopulated of its previous inhabitants. The first organized mass Jewish return arrives from France and England. The Mamluks defeat the Christian kingdom of Jerusalem and building and renovating of synagogues and churches is banned. The great Mishnai commentator Rabbi Ovadia of Bartanura settles in Jerusalem. The Ottoman Empire takes over, imposing restrictions on Jews and Christians, and Sultan Suleiman rebuilds the walls. But as the empire declines, Jerusalem is badly neglected. Still, the Jewish people stream back, build new neighborhoods, and re-establish their majority by 1863. World War I breaks out. The Ottoman Empire collapses and makes room for a new Middle East. The British Foreign Secretary, Arthur James Balfour, declares the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people. Britain receives a mandate to create a Jewish homeland, but forbids Jews from blowing the shofar or reading holy scrolls at the Western Wall. Thousands of Muslims are incited to unleash an attack against Jews in Jerusalem and Hebron. 86 Jews are brutally murdered, hundreds are wounded. UN Resolution 181 declares Jerusalem as a corpus separatum, a separate entity. A Jewish state is declared as Jerusalem is put under siege, conquered and divided. 58 synagogues are destroyed or desecrated. Harsh limitations are imposed on Jews and Christians for 19 years. The Six-Day War. Jerusalem is reunited and freedom and equality are restored. Throughout history, only Israel has protected the freedom of all peoples and faiths in Jerusalem. Shalom everyone, and thank you for joining us for this very special opportunity, for this very special opportunity to feature 
our personal and unique connection to Jerusalem, our holy city. There has been a continuous Jewish presence in Jerusalem and our connection to and passion for the city has been preserved as a memory by Jewish people around the world generation after generation. I am Dr. Ilana Heidemann of the Israel Forever Foundation, and I am honored to come to you from here in the hills of Judea, where we celebrate that the modern state of Israel, which was reborn in 1948, uh, that for years Jews were cut off from the old city, from the Kotel, from the Western Wall, from the heart of the Jewish people. This was the access of our collective and national historical identity, the center of our faith, the focus of the history of the Jewish people for generations. Throughout Israel and around the world, on the 28th of the Hebrew month of Iyar, they, we celebrate a day known as Yom Yerushalayim. This was passed already a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and we decided to focus on the days of the war, the six days where the Jewish world everywhere in the land and outside uh, was aroused in the, the miraculous victory of Israel against its surrounding nations. So on this day, June 10th, the anniversary of the complete end of the war, after these days of miracles, this is our day where we are taking a moment with you to celebrate the long history of our connection to our eternal city. It was on this date that we were reunited with the city of Zion that bears the original name that we call Zionism today, this passion and love for our holy city. History shows it that the Jews who made Jerusalem important to the world in 1004 BCE, before the Common Era, King David had established it as the capital of the Kingdom of Israel. We read about it in the Tanakh. And following the first exile, he proclaimed, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand lose its strength. Let my tongue cling to my palate. If I fail to recall you, if I fail to elevate Jerusalem above my highest joy. Three times a day, or even twice a year. <clears throat> For thousands of years, Jews turn their faces towards Jerusalem and the Temple Mount, and we pray for a return to our holy city and to Zion, generation after generation for thousands of years. When we build a house, our houses, we have been asked to leave a square unplastered, keeping a symbolic menorah on our shelves. And we break a glass at weddings in memory of the destruction of Jerusalem as a sign of our continued hope and commitment, memory and connection were kept alive and the Jewish people lived with Jerusalem forever in our hearts. It is incredible to think that after so many years of dreaming, we could be reunited with our eternal home. What does it mean in a day today where people are questioning our rights to this eternal city? What does it mean for each of us individually, as well as collectively, if we share perhaps some disagreements, some disputes, some, some confusion over how Jerusalem can, it can continue as a part of our essential being, even when we wait for this unity that we keep striving for. I'm so honored to be able to welcome you to, uh, to the ceremony where we have put together readers who are Masa alumni from around the world to share with you their voices and the voices of generations before us who have, who have embraced the love of our holy city. Uh, we just got news that one of our readers from Ecuador is unable, unfortunately, to get in. Just a moment, and we're going to hopefully have her join us. She was a part of the Masa Teaching Fellows and, and based in Haifa. May from Ecuador, are you here with us? It's the difficulty of running a virtual program. So therefore, we're going to continue and read her piece, and hopefully she'll be able to join us as we as we carry on. I want to invite all of you, however, to um, I want to invite all of you to to ask questions 
because that's what we're here for, to connect in a personal way with Yerushalayim. For those of you who are Masa alumni, who live now back abroad, and those of you who have made Aliyah, this is the great place where we can come together. So I'm happy to welcome you, everyone, and please keep uh, joining and sharing. Um, Ma, uh, May, are you able to join us at this point? So we'll continue our ceremony, just one moment. Okay, wait, I see. Sorry for the technical delays. These are the things that happen. Everybody is uh, probably used to this by now. Why don't you go ahead and we can introduce some of the members who have joined us. Guys, you can unmute yourself actually, and uh, you can introduce yourself and what year of Masa you have been a part of. Uh, hello, my name is Yonatan. I'm from the United States, and I'm currently in a Maimasa program, the Israel Government Fellows through the Menachem Begin Heritage Center, which will be finishing at the end of this month. Anyone else Hi, like to introduce themselves? Oh, yes. Hi, my name is Lita. I'm on a Masa program right now. I'm on the Masa Israel Teaching Fellows in Ashdod. Hello, everyone. I'm Gali Gordon in New York City, and I am Director of Partnerships at Masa Israel Journey. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, oh, May, you're well. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Hi. I'm so sorry. Yes. I was having some um, difficulties, but I'm here. That's okay. You know, we plan these things, and as they say in Yiddish, men tracht, tot lach. So, you know, we plan and God laughs. So here we are I'm all together. Right now, we have, we have participants can... from all over the world. Can you hear me, May? Yeah, sure, I can. Wonderful. We have participants from all over the world who are joining us for this virtual encounter with Jerusalem. So we've just allowed everybody to introduce themselves. Abby is one of our last. Abby, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? And also Tamar, please introduce yourself. I am Abby. I'm currently in New Jersey in the United States. Um, I am working with Jay Internship and yeah. And a little bit with Israel Forever. <laughs> yes. Okay. Tamar, you want to say hello? Shalom, shalom everybody. I'm Tamar, I'm a star community manager. I'm based also in Israel, working with uh, all the fellows on the alumni and it's great to be here today. Well, it is absolutely wonderful to have everyone here. As I said, we're, gonna, um, we're going to uh, have a slideshow here behind us that will be able to enhance your experience as you hear some very insightful and eye-opening and even pulling at the heartstrings words of people from around the world and from around, throughout history who have shared their love for Jerusalem. As we hear our readers, all of whom are Masa participants or alumni and myself, I am a longtime Masa educator and have alumni all over the world who have served as interns for the Israel Forever Foundation, and for us, Masa is just an incredible gift to the Jewish people. So we welcome the, all, the gift of your participation for all of you who are participants and alumni from throughout the years, and the virtual citizens of Israel, of Israel Forever, who have joined us. May, uh, you are uh, welcome. We'd like to welcome you to be a part of our experience and everyone around the world, please use the Q&A and the chat and share with us some of your own thoughts of Jerusalem. May, please, you can continue with our reading. Okay. For me, the Jew I am, Jerusalem is about politics. 
It is mentioned more than 600 times in the scripture and not a single time in the Quran. Its presence in Jewish history is overwhelming. There is no more moving prayer in Jewish history than the one expressing our journey to return to Jerusalem. To many theologians, it is Jewish history. To many poets, a source of inspiration. It belongs to the Jewish people and is much more than a city. It is what binds one Jew to another in a way that reminds hard to explain. When a Jew visits Jerusalem for the first time, it is not the first time, it is homecoming. The first song I've heard was my mother's lullaby about and for Jerusalem. Its sadness and its joy are part of our collective memory. Since King David took Jerusalem as his capital, Jews have dwelled inside its walls with only two interruptions. When Romans invaders forbade them access to the city and again, when under Jordanian occupations, Jews regardless of nationality were refused to enter in the, in the old Jewish quarter to meditate and pray at the wall. The last vestige of Solomon's temple, it is important to remember, had Jordan not joined Egypt and Syria in the war against Israel, the old city of Jerusalem will still be Arab. Clearly, while Jews were ready to die for Jerusalem, they would not kill for Jerusalem. Today, for the first time in history, Jews, Christians, and Muslims all may freely worship their shames. And contrary to certain media reports, Jews, Christians, and Muslims are allowed to build their homes anywhere in the city. The anguish over Jerusalem is not about real state, it's about memory. What's the solution? Pressure will not produce a solution. Is there a solution? Must be, there will be. We tackle the most complex and sensitive problem prematurely. Why not first take steps which will allow the Israeli and Palestinian communities to find ways to live together in an atmosphere of security? Why not leave the most difficult and most sensitive issue for such, for such time? Jerusalem must remain the world's Jewish spiritual capital, not as a symbol of anguish and bitterness, but a symbol of trust and hope. As the Hasidic master Rebbe Naham Bratzela said, everything in this world has a heart. The heart itself, has its own heart. Thank you so much for reading this beautiful piece that was written by Ellie Wiesel, that by Ellie Wiesel, who reminds us about this ancestral connection to Jerusalem. We are waiting for Flor Hassan Naum, the deputy mayor of Jerusalem to join us. So just one moment while we get her set up. In the meantime, we're going to continue with some very beautiful readings, with a beautiful reading, uh, a, a beautiful song, I'm sorry. Wonderful. While well, we wait for the mayor to join us, the deputy mayor to join us. Avi 
what what a beautiful what a beautiful collection of imagery and video that reminds us just how amazing this city is, how multicultural, how dynamic, how alive. And it is uh, miraculous to think how much it has grown over the years. While we're here to celebrate the end of the Six Day War, we are also here to celebrate its centrality to our identity and to the future. And I'm proud to welcome now a very prominent leader, a woman that I am just so honored to welcome uh, to us today. Uh, Flor Hassan Naum is the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem and who has an active and passionate voice for helping to see a Jerusalem that we are all proud and honored to call as our capital city. So Flor, thank you so much for joining us. I know we have much, but a short period of time with you. And of course, if any of you have questions, I please hope that you'll use the chat to ask them and we'll see how much Floor can fit in in between her crazy busy, busy schedule. Floor, welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for inviting me on your wonderful, wonderful program. Um, I see the other panelists. It's an honor, honestly. And, and thank you again for all the work that you do in general, your passion for Israel and for Jerusalem, believe me, is keeping us on a, on, a, on a positive note in these difficult days, also for the country, also for the city, but also for the world. Um, it's really a, a pleasure to be with all of you. Jerusalem is a city of contrast. It's a city that bring, brings different types of people together. When King David created, built the city as the capital of his kingdom 3,000 years ago, why did he pick Jerusalem? Why did he pick this place? He wanted a place where all tribes could come and gather. And Jerusalem was an area that didn't belong to any one tribe. It was between Judah and Benjamin, but it didn't belong to any specific tribe. And Jerusalem was supposed to be the place that every Jew, every member of Am Israel, can see themselves in as their capital, as their eternal capital. And so the very DNA of Jerusalem today is one of diversity. It's our strength. Of course, it brings about many, many different challenges, but the diversity of Jerusalem is part of its very big advantages in the city. And so we try and use the diversity for advancing our city. We have 25% ultra-Orthodox, we have 37% Arabs in Jerusalem. We have a small two, three percentage of Christians in the city. We are indeed the most diverse city in the country. And what we're trying to do on a daily basis is ensure that all the different minorities in this city can advance and have the same opportunities in the city. And this is what the mayor, Moshe Leon, does on a daily basis. We just announced last week that we're opening, we're going to build a high-tech park in East Jerusalem, in the Arab part of the city, to bring about 10,000 jobs for all uh, the, the graduating students from the Arab community of the city. Of course, we have so much development going on in the rest of the city. And everything that we do, we try and be inclusive of everybody because we believe that that's our strength, that's our diversity. But what's also very interesting about Jerusalem is it's a city of contrast, but it's a city of, of contrast converging. So we are the connection between the old and the new, the past, the present and the future, and heaven and earth. Jerusalem is the place where earth began connecting with the heavens. And so all our innovation here in the city, when you analyze it, it's innovation that brings about contrast. So for example, we've developed a very interesting design and technology platforms here. We've developed very interesting um, connections between uh, biology, technology, biotech is very, very strong in our city. We've developed incredible partnerships around art and science. And again, this is the advantage of our city, that it's a city of coming together, of contrast, of one and one makes three. And so, as soon as uh, hopefully this difficult period is over, we can uh, we look forward to receiving all of you again, all of many of you who know Jerusalem, many of you who spend time here to welcome you back, so you can experience the the city 
as we develop the new city as well as enjoying everything the old city has to offer. And today I'm in charge of trying to resuscitate and rehabilitate tourism in our city. And so I also want Jerusalem to be the model for post-corona tourism, where all the best technologies that make people feel safe about going and traveling again are here in the city. We are the pilot city for all the best technologies uh, that we have for tourism and to try and welcome people back into our city. And so with all of that, I wish you all uh, a lot of health, um, a lot of great wishes and good luck in everything you do. And we very much look forward to having you here back in Jerusalem very, very soon. And I'd be happy to welcome you to City Hall. Thank you so much, Gloria. It's amazing to think about how much has been accomplished. You know, here we are celebrating the end of the Six Day War. And there is, of course, a lot of uh, pol politicization of Jerusalem. How do you feel that we can encourage those that are not living here who maybe feel a certain way about it, how can we encourage them to deepen their connection with it when they feel so frustrated by the severity of the contrast as you described? Well, look, I, I got to say that in the last 10 years, there's been uh, much more integration of all the different minorities uh, into mainstream society. And I tell you the one good thing to come out of Corona. I think during Corona, all the different groups in the city realized that we have one common enemy and that was the virus and that was getting sick. Um, and everything that the city did for their Jewish residents, they did for their Arabs residents. When we did food vouchers for the needy, for needy families, for the needy elderly, hot meals three times a week, everything was done equally in all parts of the city. And I have to tell you that the majority of Arabs today from East Jerusalem, if you ask them, where would they rather be? Um, would they rather be under one united city? Um, most of them would say that they would because they understand that their salvation is not coming from the Palestinian leadership who really done not that much for them. Uh, and now here, both the government and the municipal government are stretching out our hands and saying, we're all one, we're all residents of the same city. We have to come together and advance our city together. And there's been a real change in attitude, also for Jews, also for Arabs. And so I would say that post 67, we're in the best place possible in terms of our relationships with our Arab cousins who live uh, only a few kilometers from us. And we now, uh, I speak for myself, but I, I think I can speak for a lot of the Arab leadership in, in the east part of the city, feel that we belong to one city and we want the good of the city in order to advance all populations. My job is to, be, we have equal rights, everybody has equal rights, but my job is to ensure that we also have equal opportunities for all. Absolutely wonderful to hear that there are so many, especially right now where the whole world is in upheaval, over social justice issues. But here we are in the center of the universe, really not only talking about what we wish we would see with social justice matters, but we're actually seeing things happen with it. I know that you've been very instrumental with, um, uh, with the mayor and also shifting some of the education patterns. And we see that Jews all over the world have the metal need in order to actively defend uh, on the front lines, but maybe what we need to start with is like your work in education at the foundation level that we each understand it a little bit better, that we understand it a little bit more personally. But there was a you question know, here I, that was I, asked about the distinct yes. groups and if the work that you're doing is at all encouraging more interaction between the enclaves of different social elements within society. So it's interesting that you asked that question because that was going to be my next point. You know, I'll tell you what, in Jerusalem, we don't have to curate interactions. They happen yeah. every day. We work together. We live together. We go to restaurants in the same places. We go to cinemas. We, you know, I always say in Tel Aviv, people talk about peace. In Jerusalem, our day to day, we're making peace every day because we are not having to artificially set up interactions mm -hmm. just here. 
we all have Arab friends, we all have Arab colleagues. Uh, you know, we all work and live in the same environments. Uh, the businesses are mixed. You know, the women who do my nails are, are the Arab women who own the beauty parlor. That's just the way we live here. Mm. Nothing has to be curated. And so this is how we want that this already happens. What we want is better opportunities. I want Arab women owned businesses to be part of the whole city, not just an enclave in East Jerusalem. I want Arab men and women in high tech in the best jobs. This is what we're working towards every day. The right of opportunities, the best opportunities. I want more Arab uh, young women and men in in colleges and universities because they're going to get the best jobs coming from there. And this is what we're actively encouraging. We have today more Arab men and women in, in Jerusalem colleges and universities than we've ever had. So we're in, we've got a good basis to build upon a better future. But in terms of the interactions, they don't have to be curated. They just happen because we live together. Yeah, we wish that the rest of the world who continues the lie of apartheid would be able to understand some of the reality that's on the ground. The beauty of the Masa experience, of course, is that you get to come and feel it. It's like the, the JNF experience of going it's and getting your hands dirty experience. in the soil planting. But that's what right. do we do? We're now stuck in a situation where Tourists can't come, and I know with your uh, extensive work with the tourism, you know, the tourism efforts, but now we're at a point where not only tourists can't come, but Masa students can't come, and birthright groups can't come. How do you feel that we can help them fill the gap from the program Virtual Citizens of Israel? We recognize everyone to be a part of our global community. But what can we do to help them feel it from afar where they're dealing with their own conflict socially and otherwise? Well, I think just the way that Massa really um, reinvented the authentic experience in Israel, we can use online resources and Jewish content, touristic content to keep people connected until please God they'll be able to come back. And that's something that we really need to work on. I'm doing Zooms every day, all about explaining to people what Jerusalem's all about, sharing know-how of how we got through the corona. Um, this is something I'm doing every day. There needs to be much more of this. And of course, I'd be happy to discuss with you uh, any way that we can you know, develop something specific for Masa that we can use. Wonderful, and, and of course, Israel I'm forever. I'm gonna is... have to leave you now. But it's That's been okay. That's okay. Thank you so much. And we all, both Masa and Israel Forever, look forward to working with Jerusalem and with you and seeing you grow in your leadership. Thank you so much, Laura, for joining us. Today. Amen. Thank you, my dear. Bye. Bye. So as we continue our program tonight, we're going to delve a little bit into the war. The war that not only changed the face of the land of Israel, but it also changed the face of the personal connection for, uh, for Jews all over the world in the way that they understood and felt about Israel. As some of you may know, during the War of Independence in 1948, when, is, when the, immediately after the declaration of the birth of the State of Israel, uh, we were attacked and, a, and forced into a war by our neighbor. In 1967, again, a war was forced upon us, and in the interim, so much growth had happened, but yet it was the War of 67 that opened the eyes of the world. Much like, for example, the Exodus ship opened the eyes of the world to the plight of the Jewish refugee after the Holocaust, the Six Day War opened the eyes of the plight of the Jew in Israel, continuously fighting for their survival. So I'd like to welcome Masa alumni uh, Lida, uh, Lida, who is going to continue with some of our active readings, please. Lita Levine coming to us from Florida in the United States and a Masa teaching fellow of the past year. In the spring of 1967, on June 4th, a war was forced upon us by the Arab countries that surrounded Israel 
who attacked the Jewish state, determined to destroy her. Instead of suffering defeat, Israel won the war in just six days. On June 7th, more than 3,000 years after King David sanctified it as the capital of Israel and the city of the temple, and nearly 1,900 years after it fell and was torn from us, during the destruction of the second temple, the Kotel was liberated. By June 10th, the war was over. Jerusalem was united. And once again, our eternal city was restored as the capital of the Jewish homeland. When Israeli soldiers liberated the Temple Mount area, site of the Western Wall, the holiest site in Judaism, they found the area to be covered in filth, neglected in every way imaginable. 58 synagogues, some hundred of years old, were destroyed, their contents looted and desecrated, while Jewish religious sites were turned into chicken coops and animal stalls. The Jewish cemetery on Mount of Olives, where Jews had been burying their dead for over 2,500 years, was ransacked. Graves were desiccated. Thousands of tombstones were smashed and used as building material. Paving stones or for latrines in Arab Legion army camps. On top of cemetery, gra graves were de demolished to make way for the building of the Intercontinental Hotel and surrounding roads. Welcoming Abby Budman, a current Massa Fellow, who is working at, with J Internship from abroad. This the one of the first summers ever where we are welcoming remote interns who are helping to feel that they are making a difference even from far away. So Abby Budman, I'm proud to welcome you as one of our Israel Forever summer interns. Please join us at the Kotel. I'm speaking to you from the plaza of the Western Wall, the remnant of our holy temple. Comfort my people, comfort them, says the Lord your God. This is the day we have hoped for. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The vision of all generations is being realized before our eyes. The city of God, the site of the temple, the temple mount, and the western wall, the symbol of the nation's redemption, have been redeemed today by you. Heroes of the Israel Defense Forces, by doing so you have fulfilled the oath of the generations. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its cunning. Indeed, we have not forgotten you, Jerusalem, our holy city, our glory. In the name of the entire Jewish people in Israel and the diaspora, I hereby recite with supreme joy, Blessed art thou, our Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, who has preserved us, and enabled us to reach this day, this year in Jerusalem, rebuilt. General Shlomo Gorin, Chaplain of the Israeli Defense Forces at the Western Wall. Everyone is fighting over her, passion and fire, but only we know what true love is. Everyone makes eyes and flirts and sends the hand to touch her. How long will it take them to accept that you are our city? In my heart you burn, I have none other. My city, my city, my city. Everyone wants to tear you apart, to divide and cut you in half. I will never let them hurt you. Overall, you, I will always watch. This is a tough neighborhood, but we know our rights are clear. Our city, your flag waves in my heart, it burns. My city, my city, my city. There is no other. Even when I'm distant, I'm confused and in despair. When they took you away from you, when they took you away from me, you were still the apple of our eye. Even then, we didn't forget you, that our hearts and our destiny are one. Forever, I swear, you will never be alone. Don't worry, we are here at home and we will never leave you. From a paratrooper after the liberation of the Western Wall. Dana Ramula. 
Ma'im kerva vesante. Young girl stands before the Amra lit kiot ha shofar hazakoten, aval hashtika od yoter. Amra lit zion har habayit, shatka li hagmul vehazakhu. Shazahar al mitzha ben arbaim haya argaman shel malku hakotel ezo behatzeb hakotel oferet bada. Hatsanhan mulha kotel Mikol mahlak to rak ehad Amar lila mavet endmut Ach yesh koter Tisha milimeter bilvad Amar li eneni domeya ושב להשפיל מבטים. אך סבא שלי, אלוהים היודע, קבור כאן בהר הזיתים. I'm pleased to welcome Gali Gordon, Director of Partnerships for the Masa Israel Journey, reading the poem Jerusalem by Yehuda Amichai. Thank you so much. Jerusalem is a port city on the shore of eternity. The Temple Mount is a great ship, a pleasure y'all in splendor. From the portholes of her wailing wall, jubilant saints peer like passengers. Chassidim on the pier wave goodbye, yelling hurrah, bon voyage. She is always docking, always embarking. And the fences and docks, and policemen and flags, and churches high mass, 
and the mosques and the smokestacks of synagogues and the shanties, of praise and mountain billows. The ram's horn sounds out at sunset. One more has set sail. Yom Kippur sailors in white uniforms ascends between the ropes and ladders of tried and true prayers and the prophets of market and gates and golden cap domes. Jerusalem is the Venice of God. After the miraculous victory, the Israeli Knesset passed a series of laws to protect holy sites and ensure freedom of worship to all of their faiths. Only since this important day in history, Christians, Muslims, and Jews have all been granted full religious and cultural freedom in the holy city, and all Arabs living within Jerusalem's municipal boundaries are granted Israeli citizenship. In a statement at the Western Wall, Minister of Defense Moshe Dayan indicated Israel's peaceful intent and pledged to preserve religious freedom for all faiths in Jerusalem. This morning, the Israel Defense Forces liberated Jerusalem. We have united Jerusalem, the divided capital of Israel. We have returned to the holiest sites of our holy places, never to part from it again. To our Arab neighbors, we extend, also at this hour, and with added emphasis at this hour, our hand in peace. And to our Christian and Muslim fellow citizens, we solemnly promise full religious freedom and rights. We do not come to Jerusalem to conquer the holy places of others and not to interfere with the adherence of other faiths, but in order to safeguard its eternity and to live there together with others in unity. June 7th, 1967. On May 12th, 1968, the following year, the chief rabbinate of Israel declared the 28th of ER a minor religious holiday known as a way of thanking God for answering the 2000 year old prayer, the Shana Haba'a B'Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. On March 28th, 1998, the Knesset passed the Yom Yerushalayim Jerusalem Day Law, making the day a national holiday, celebrated by parades through the city of thousands of people around the world. This day holds such an importance for the Jewish people that Hallel, the prayer of celebration and gratitude is recited. Thank you so much, Gali. In terms, when we think about partnerships, we think about how much we can accomplish together. And I think that the unity that we saw happen in Jerusalem after the Six Day War and the unity of organizations such as Masa and all of the organizations you represent and our ability to work together today is an amazing testament to just how much we are determined to carry on that legacy that they had set forth for us on this historic day. Exactly. Thank you so much, Alana. And I think exactly like I was just saying, La Shana Haba Yerushalayim next year in Jerusalem. I think we're seeing demands from across the diaspora and unprecedented demand as we have our wait list and we'll open registration soon. <coughs> And exciting news is that Masa participants were just granted permission to enter the country, um, Israel that is. Um, and so we're excited to see unprecedented demands. Invite all of you or anyone who has an 18 to 30 year old in your life to join us on a Masa program in Israel next year. And when you come, you have an opportunity to get acquainted with history, both through living in its streets and also the sounds and the memory of its history. We, the Jews, we are a people of memory. And therefore, we want to take a moment and re recollect those soldiers, some of whom were diaspora Jews, who came to serve as what, were now, what are now called lone soldiers and what were then called Mahal, the volunteers who served in the Israeli army. And as the units fought for the freedom of Jerusalem, Ivat Hatach Moshet became the battle on Ammunition Hill that stayed in the hearts and the minds of so many. Please join us for this very special video. <laughs> Thank 
אנחנו בתוך העיר העתיקה. אנחנו בתוך העיר העתיקה. חטיבת הצנחנים של מוטה גור ציינה את כיבוש ירושלים עוד באותו היום במסדר חגיגי בהר הבית. משם החלה הנהירה אל עברו האחר של הקיר, לכותל המערבי. ברגע זה אני עורף במדרגות אל הכותל. זהו הכותל, ואני נוגע באבני הכותל המערבי. איחדנו מחדש את ירושלים המבוטרת. חזרנו לקדושים שבמקומותינו. חזרנו על מנת שלא להיפרד מהם לעולם.
amazing to be able to watch such an incredible, uh, such an incredible uh, showcasing of what it means, this, in, this city that has endured so much history. Um, as we think about all that the country has witnessed in its time, and we realize what the benefit is of a unified city, one of the questions that was asked in the Q&A was, how do we deal with the rise of anti-Israel rhetoric in the current crisis that is happening, especially in the United States, where different movements are uh, utilizing, or shall we say, abusing Israel and the Jewish connection as a source of uh, increasing frustration, as a source of incitement. And one of the things that we need to remember, all of us, is that only a democratic Israel has protected freedom of worship for all faiths in the city, and Jerusalem must never again be divided. Jerusalem must remain the united capital of Israel. Our current Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, said this years ago, and it remains true. Because no matter where we are, whether it's on your own Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Bay, or anywhere else in the world, that we are grateful to the soldiers who have fought our wars, to the Jewish pioneers who have settled communities all throughout the land, because we, it is our obligation, we Jews, we the people of Israel all over, should remember its history, embrace its history, and use our voices as virtual citizens of Israel to become more literate in how to respond for the accusations, most of which, unfortunately, are based on lies. We at Israel Forever try very hard to provide the tools and resources so that you can engage, not in, again, always the frontal debate, but how you can feel more confident in the knowledge that you have that home is Israel wherever you may reside in the world. I'd like to welcome Yonatan, who is uh, one of the government fellows of Massa who will read to us of this beautiful memory of a Massa alumni from over 20 years ago and her letter of love to Jerusalem. Yonatan, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Ilana. Home is where the heart is. They say that home is where the heart is. If that's the case, then my heart has at various times, and I guess always will belong in England, Australia, and the United States because these are the countries that I have lived in. I also lived in Israel for 11 years, specifically in Jerusalem, but I wouldn't say Jerusalem has my heart. Israel has my heart, and my entire immediate family still lives in Israel, but I would say unequivocally that Jerusalem has my soul. Jerusalem is just that kind of place. If you've never been, it's hard to describe. If you have been, then you know what I'm talking about. Jerusalem seeps into your pores and it's impossible to shake. The sights sounds and smells of a modern city clashing with an old one is nothing short of miraculous. In Jerusalem, you can rail against a corrupt municipality and in the same breath witness extraordinary acts of chesed, kindness. You walk the streets and chat to complete strangers or have a complete stranger open up their home to you for a Shabbat meal because they met you in the supermarket and asked if you had somewhere to go. It's in Jerusalem that your heart will break over and over when there's a suicide bombing and scores of innocent lives are lost where your cell phone will give out because people around the country and the world will be calling to make sure you and everyone you know is okay. And then your heart will break over again when Zaka will rally its volunteers and they will come out and collect every piece of shattered bone and tiny piece of flesh that used to be a person. Collect them all and ensure that there is a proper burial. In Jerusalem, you'll dance in the streets on Simchat Torah or any given day and be proud to be a Jew in your Jewish homeland in the capital of the country. And you'll also be awoken to the unique sounds of the muezzin call as the Muslims head to morning prayers. You'll haggle in Hebrew with Israeli vendors for a better deal on a dozen apples at the Shuk in Machane Yehuda. And in the old city of Jerusalem, you'll haggle in English or Arabic in that market too. In Jerusalem, you can walk to the Western Wall and touch stones that are thousands of years old, say a prayer, leave a note, and then walk across the street to the Sultan's Pool to see a concert or a film. In the old city, you can simply walk a few feet and be in four different quarters. You can run your hand along the stones in the Jewish, Christian, Arab, and Armenian quarters. You can see the bullet holes in the walls from wars. In Jerusalem, you'll watch in awe as high-rises and new buildings tower over some 
the most ancient structures in existence and whizzing your car down a major highway while struggling to negotiate the tiny one-way streets in the heart of the city with cars parked on the footpaths, knowing that it's so much easier to walk to wherever you want to go. Jerusalem is where an old world meets a new one and nobody blinks an eye. Jerusalem is where a sunset over the old city walls will stop your heart, where you know summer is on its way because vendors start selling watermelon on the side of the road. Jerusalem is where people from all over the world flock to live, to visit, to pray, and to play. She will break your heart many times over, but she'll also heal it too. Life in Jerusalem is an ongoing love affair of ups and downs and of struggles and triumphs. You have to give yourself over to Jerusalem in order to truly understand the beauty that is hers and hers alone. And that is why she has and always will have my soul. I think that Jerusalem has captured so many of our souls, so many of us in a different way. I remember the first time I myself touched the stones of Yerushalayim after my parents who came here two weeks after the Six Day War had ended and they went to the Kotel and took me and my sisters there years and years later. And when I reached my hand out to touch the Kotel, it felt as if the stones were reaching out to touch me. Even when we think of how we raise our children, this would be my son's beautiful painting, and how we raise our children to understand the meaning of touching the hotel walls, of having incredible connections to our holy city, that it becomes a part of our art, even for our youngest children who are able to understand the meaning of having Jerusalem as the cornerstone of their identity. We invite you to come make, a Jeruz make Jerusalem the cornerstone of your home and of your heart. Join us for the singing of Hatikva as we remember that even for 3000 years and when this song was written over 50 years before the birth of the modern state of Israel, we have a 3000 year old dream and that dream includes Zion and Jerusalem. Join us for our video and then we will continue to take questions for those who are interested.
It pulls at the heartstrings every single time. And I am just even sitting from here in Jerusalem and reminded of the eternal Jewish love for and commitment that has been deepened and strengthened over the years. Our continued connection is a part of our national legacy, our ancestral heritage. Each one of you plays an important role in recognizing how Jerusalem is a tool to ensuring Jewish sovereignty in our historic and sacred homeland, and also a tool for strengthening Jewish identity wherever we might be in the world. I've noticed we have a few questions. I wanna comment by the way of the, I also get chills every time I hear the audio of the liberation, every time I hear Hatikva. How do you feel wherever you are in the world? Share with us your thoughts and some of your questions. Um, one of the things that has been asked here is how we can um, how we can take back the ability to pray on the Temple Mount. Of course, this is a conflicting issue for many people. Even though we regained sovereignty over the region after the the, the uh, victory of the Six Day War. Israel very often takes significant steps in order to procure peace. Unfortunately, our neighbor countries do not always oblige, and therefore we continue, unfortunately, in a battle that right now is once again at the forefront of mainstream media. I just wanna recommend to everybody that you keep an eye out for alternative sources of news and of staying informed so that you can, rather than be persuaded by one set of propaganda or another, that you are able to form an opinion that is based on fact and the longevity of the history of rights of the Jewish people to Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. And if you have a cause that you believe in, that you use that voice, because what is our Israel connection for if not to strengthen the unity of Am Yisrael, all of the Jewish people, wherever we may be and however we may practice, whatever our politics, that we may rise above it and strengthen the feeling of unity, because that is why we sing Am Yisrael Chai, and that is what we must each work for, each in our own way. I see a few other questions here. Thank you, my kids are quite cute. I'm quite proud of them. And if there are no other questions, we welcome you to engage with us and join us, because with Masa and Israel Forever, we will be featuring very soon a special series that is going to engage you Masa alumni in a discussion on how we face anti-Semitism in its many forms today. A lot of these webinars are going around and many people are over Zoomed. And what are the words that are being used? You know, we're uh, uh, getting too much screen time, but we wanna be able to provide for you the resources and the tools that you need. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us, the Masa community, alumni community on Facebook, Israel Forever. Reach out to me personally as well. And I've put my email right there for you in our chat so that you can be in touch at your convenience. And yes, we will also be happy to provide this video and webinar for anyone who is interested. We sincerely hope that you have enjoyed this experience and we thank you for joining us. Thank you to Masa. Thank you for to all of the alumni and good luck. May Hashem bless us all and all of Israel with peace. Thank you.